हरिओ we are continuing with the description of a realized soul the one who has reached the destination how is he in the description of such a muni or such a realized soul or a yogi yukta yogi The shloka says that jitatmanaha prashantasya paramatma samahitaha. There is a bit of a vyakaran twist into the shloka. Prashantasya is referring to the shasti of the prashant of the one who is prashant. Paramatma samahitaha. मधुसूदन सरस्वती महाराज हैज इंटरप्रिटेड दिस श्लोका इन टू डिफरेंट वेज जितात्म प्रशांत परम एज वन पार्ट आत्मा सामित एज सेकेंड पार्ट वैल शंकराचार्य हैज इंटरप्रिटेड जितात्म प्रशांत परमात्मा सामित द क्वेश्चन हियर इज शीतोष्ण सुख दुखेशु तथा मान अपमान योहो सप्तमी इन द हैप्पीनेस और इंसल्ट एंड डिसअपॉइंटमेंट्स हीट एंड कोल्ड दैट मींस अनुकूल एंड प्रतिकूल संवेदना ही इज बैलेंस्ड Now samahita ha is to be taken as balanced with sitoshna sukha dukhe shu mana apmana yo ho, or samahita ha is to be taken with paramatma, because kriya pada is adhyavrut here. There is an adhyahar of kriya pada. But the first thing first, jitat mana ha means what? Jit is victory, conquering, all right. Conquering. Atmanaha. Now, this Atmanaha is referring to the self. The self meaning, not the self, but the self. Atmanaha is myself when I act through my ahankar. That means whenever I am having an active mind pulsating through different thoughts called vrittis sufficiently backed by the ego called ahankara ahankara pranita vritti udbhava kari mana that atman which is called jivatma when it gets controlled and vanquished jitatmanaha in other words one who has controlled the indriyas both now we are talking of karma indriya and nyana indriya both and the indriya here does include the mind also because manaha shasthani indriyani the restraint that is applied to the indriyas what is the net result of this restraint i have stopped coveting something i have stopped becoming greedy about something means exactly what we are doing we are in effect trying to reduce or subdue the vritti what is vritti taral roopi badal taral roopi change in the substratum of chit or antakaran is called vritti what is the simpler modification of this word a thought is a vritti so the aim is to become jitendriya 
to become jit atmana it is essential prerequisites that the thoughts are not produced now the question is if i am thoughtless how will i survive gurudeva went to the stage of thoughtlessness now if you are thoughtless how will you survive because there has to be a thought of doing the jnana yajna this is exactly the secret that is explained in the shloka one who has conquered the organs and the indriyas or the one who has controlled the body mind and intellect first thing that he gets is absence of vrittis so he becomes prashant prakarshena shant chira shanti shantim charam adhigachyati we will see we repeat in many places in shlokas of bhagavad gita para shanti as naneshwar maharaj calls it the shanti itself means vritti rahitya now we have to somehow reconcile with the fact that the realized soul doesn't have vritti but without vritti or thought you cannot survive because if you are constantly in brahma sthiti then you are completely useless for this vyavaharik world a live example happened with swami vivekananda when he argued with ramakrishna paramahansa saying that if atmat khyati or atmat jnanam comes then do you mean to say that everything will be seen as atman and ramakrishna paramahansa said yes it will be seen as atman narendra swami vivekananda said no i don't agree with it and then ramakrishna paramahansa told him that you shall start seeing brahman everywhere from now onwards swami vivekananda came home he could not reach properly because he was not able to see the tram that is coming in the on the road he was about to hit the gate he came home and he was eating and the mother bhuvaneshwari devi mata ji kept telling him narendra you have had your food three times why you are continuously eating sometimes he would just stare at the plate and the bowl because everything was atma swarup ultimately went back to thakur da ramakrishna param mahasa and requested to be brought back to the normal state what happened a continuous brahmaikya sthiti it is impossible to continue in the vyavahara and for the vyavahara you require thoughts or the vrittis but the difference between because we also have vrittis gurudeva also had vritti we have thoughts gurudeva had thoughts what is the difference between the two that is the difference which is told here that sitoshna sukha dukheshu mana apamana yo saptami in man and apman and in favorable and unfavorable conditions they remain samahita meaning karma has two aspects to it we all know that i ate mango and mango does a sweet taste a mango does give a sweet taste even to the realized soul he doesn't feel it bitter or tasteless he knows it is nice and tasty right the difference is in phala bhog swarup karma anubhava swarup is same for both the one who is realized the one who is not realized karma anubhava swarup is same oh the water is hot and fit for taking bath gurudev also realized it we also realized it the difference is vyavahara kal vyavahara kaleshu in the vyavahara kal people likes us are atma na abhimukh while in the vyavahara also 
the realized soul is absorbed in the atma swaroop he is atma bhimukha that is why the one who is samahita samahita means what content of the mind when parmatma becomes the content of the mind it is called pratyaya is the technical word used in yoga shastra for content of mind it is called pratyaya when pratyaya in the mind is parmatman when in other words in simpler words when the mind is continuously continuously word is more important continuously that is what is called yukta when it is continuously engaged or concentrating or samahit or sanyama or dhyana dharana samadhi yukta in paramatman then he is no more in vyavahara kala and one who is not in vyavahara kala for him it is like a person who is sleeping can you insult him can you praise him you cannot why because he is not there to receive these inputs and react to it reason being the reception is alive but the reception or the cognition getting converted into reactive or responsive pattern is absent why because you cannot react or respond if ego is absent the essential canon that fires the thought is called ego when the canon itself is absent there is no question of bombshell being fired even though you supply the can uh, supply there is a huge supply of the gunpowder gunpowder is the thought canon is the ego and what gets blasted is the raga dukha sama e sama shitoshna mana apamana etc that is why jitatmanah prashantasya paramatma samahitah the one who has controlled the mind and the organs that means himself or the jivatma or the abhas such a person being serene prashantasya the closest english word is serene what is serenity serenity is calmness when there is no flutter of thoughts over mind pristine pure lake like condition of water where there are no waves at all is called prashant the pacific ocean is called prashanta mahasagar because that many places being so huge you do get places where it is just water and water everywhere for miles along without any movement contrary to that is the agitative mind agitative mind is vritti pradhanyata so jitatmanah the conqueror of the self that means one self whose mind has become tranquil and serene prashantasya he is paramatma samahitah now the word should be jitatmanah prashantasya manah paramatma samahitah but the word man is not used here because man himself is absent that is the beauty of bhagavad gita the language profound divine language called sanskrit because if mana word is used that means still the apparatus of ego is there since it is not there paramatma samahitah means one who has become paramatman paramatman doesn't have mind because having a mind would gravitating in the maya then and then only then and then means when whenever paramatma samahitah avastha is there of whom of the jitatmanah prashantasya 
at that point of time what will happen what is the test there will be no sukham no dukham no mana no apamana this is called abhasa nash in technical language the shastra refers to this situation as abhasa nash what is abhasa all that we experience with the help of mind is called abhas what is that we experience with the help of the mind my brother this world my job my payment my children my happiness my sorrow my plans my future my money my savings abhas why abhas because abhas has got seven steps as per the shastra the first step of abhas is called adnyana we are all born with it what is adnyana we all are convinced about one thing that brahman is the ultimate thing but at the same time we all are 100% sure about the fact that we are not brahman why we say i am balaji maharaj i am himanshu ji i am pradeep ji i am dr jadav i am convinced about it however orally i may say my inner concretized ossified feeling inside me he say tells me that i am so and so i am so and so that means i am not brahman this is called adnyana this adnyana is covering one thing and showing another thing covering one thing is fine for example brahman is covered agreed that is adnyana but adnyana is a double edged sword it also creates another problem it covers the brahman and creates the misconception called vikshep and avaran what is vikshep i am not brahman is half of the statement and i am dr jadav is another half of the statement the first half is called adnyan avaran and second half is called vikshep erroneous or a wrong feeling about oneself brahma is called vikshep and not knowing the true nature is called adnyan or the avaran so with these three stages we are moving in this samsara adnyan avaran vikshep then because of some punya karma of the past birth etc we come in contact with something called chinmay mission something called chinmay ananda maharaj something called vivekananda maharaj there are 1.3 billion people in india but 0.103% also do not read any of the scriptures of which they are proud why so because the punya karma is lacking maybe we have done some punya karma so on maybe on one day of the week maybe for 10 minutes we are trying to read what the great soul like gurudeva said because of which we realize that no 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 hold on hold on hold on there is something called brahman gurudev is talking about it this is called paroksha gnana the fourth avastha of abhas paroksha gnana somewhere because of the study of agama or the shabda pramana which is the vedas or upanishads or bhagavad gita purana chaturdasha vidyasthanam we come to know that there is something called atman we have not realized it but the gnana vidnana is not there but the gnana that yes there is something called brahman is called paroksha gnana which is the fourth avastha after studying all this one amongst the millions like gurudeva cherishes and pushes forward on this gnanam to ultimately reach the intuitive experiential knowledge of this truth or the atman and he gets what is called as aparoksha gnana in aparoksha gnana one gets the vidnyan or the experience of i am brahma 
Once this is there, then immediately the sixth stage dawns, which is called a shoka vinasha. Shoka vinasha means all the pains and the sorrows are destroyed forever. That is what the stage which is described as Shitoshna Sukadukeshu Tathamana Apamana Yoho Samam Asti. And after Shokanas, the last of the seventh stage of Abhasa Avastha is called Ananda Vyapti. That means everything is just blissful. But mind well, even Ananda is an experience. And Atman is without experience because for experience to be ha to have experience, one needs even the smallest possible sukshma antakaran urti. That means antakaran chitta is still there. After crossing the seventh abhasa avastha, abhasa is over and you are purna brahma maya, brahma lina. That is what is described in the shloka that such a person who has conquered everything, the organs and the indriyas and the mind, jitatmana, whose vruttis have subsided and his mind has become serene and tranquil, prashantasya, his paramatma samayitaha, his entire concentration, sayyama, is happening on the Brahman or the Atman to such a person. There is no Sitoshna Sukhadusya Manapamana Yoho. Why so? Because even though the tax authorities have issued the Chalan, the person on whom the Chalan is given is no more existing. So, howsoever big may be the Chalan or the small may be the Chalan, or it may be a reward or no reward, person who is supposed to take is no more existing. The Astitva Vinasha from the Vyavaharika Sakta is being done by them. And that is why Sakta Traya Siddhanta is applicable even during the sadhana period. But the one who is Triguna Atita, Tom Triguna Atitam, we always say Ganesh Ji Maharaj, Triguna Atitam, once you transcend them, then nothing of Vyavarik word will apply to you. In one of the examples of Drushtanta given by Jairam Ji of Gurudeva, in one of the lectures of Gurudeva, Gurudeva had some nail which was piercing in his thigh while delivering a lecture. He continued with the lecture and after the lecture, immediately he got up. Since he never used to get up so immediately, the sevaka, when they went closer to the place, they found that there was blood lying there. That means the nail was biting through the flesh while he was delivering the lecture without an iota of fluctuation in the mind. Samashitoshna Sukhadukkeshu because he is in that stage. So this is called the stage of the realized soul. Why it, is, why it is so? It is so because of the things that are described in the eighth shloka. Jnana vidnana truptatma. Now the question is, here the word trupta has been used. The one who is satisfied by jnana and vidnana. What do you mean by jnana vidnana satisfied? Satisfaction is there when there is hunger or there is a need or there is an urgency. You need something, you get it, you get satisfied. So what is this Truptatma satisfied with? One is a Jnana. Jnana means Paroksha Jnana. Paroksha Jnana means Pustaka Jnana. But no scriptural knowledge can make you reach where you are supposed to reach unless you have started working on it and assimilating it to reach there. So, a jnana of correct type, that means the only knowledge coming from the Chaturdasha Vidyasthan or the Veda. If the not secular knowledge, the Veda, Whatever it proposes as prayojanam, 
the mumukshata or moksham is understood properly understood means that is at the intellectual level the one that is understood at intellectual level the knowledge itself pertains to non intellectual level non intellectual level meaning beyond intelligence buddhi grahita jnanam is what we are studying right now with the best of our buddhi best of knowledge in vyakaran the sanskrit and and commentary and english and, and whatever and our understanding pick up capacity whatever we call it is all employed here to understand but this understanding is within the purview of the brain or the buddhi now the this gyan which is mentioned in veda is talking about something which is beyond buddhi so conquering that which is transcending the intellect with the help of the intellect so first what you do first you take the help of the intellect till the time you are taking the help of the intellect you are getting gyanam when the same gyanam is utilized by you to transcend the intellect it is called intuitive experience it is not knowledge it is intuitive experience which is vidnyan visheshena jnatavyata to know and to realize are two different things we know because guru dev taught us we are studying it guru dev taught us what is atman what are the desires we have to go against this there is a sadhan chatushtya then there is samadamadi shataka then we have to do viveka vairagya all this is dhyanam scriptural knowledge shruti shruti purana nam it is required it is important because first to is to work and exhaust your buddhi but the ultimate knowledge which is called as atma gnana is not within the purview or the capacity of the intellect yet the most purified intellect or the most sattva guna pradhana intellect helps us to transcend the intellect you have to go out of your skin for which you require to become subtle the subtlety is possible with the sharpest possible penetrating activity of brain which is nothing else but the complete avishkar of the sattva guna so when the chitta shuddhi happens the intellect chitta shuddhi itself is required or is done for sharpening the tool called intellect and making it as pristine and as pure such a pristine and pure intellect when it transcends the intellect itself vidnyanam arrives now what is left gnanam that means whatever is within the purview of the intellect is already obtained what is to be obtained after transcending intellect that is also obtained now obtaining is called apnoti in sanskrit obtainability is within the intellect beyond the intellect is only gnatavyata realization experiencing the thing intuitive intuition now both are already had by this gentleman who is a yogi then he is a gnana trupta vidnana trupta why there is nothing else to be desired any more whatever could come in the within the purview or the capacity of the buddhi he is already obtained whatever could come in the capacity of the non buddhi or beyond buddhi is also realized so he has become now trupta that means kasmin bhagavo vidnyate sarvam idam vidnyato bhavati what is that by knowing which nothing is left to be known he has reached that stage so there is nothing no more thing to know such person is called gnan vidnyan truptatma naturally such a person is kutastha because he starts staying at kuta kuta is the anvil it's also called the tip of the mountain because that's the place where there is nothing there is nothing beyond the last point to reach but as guru deva said kutastha means he is staying like an anvil anvil means 
everything is happening on the anvil without anvil getting affected meaning thereby the whole samsara whole creation utsarjan the whole universe is happening like a rainbow on the substratum of this scooter stha so instead of being the part of the game that is being played yantra rudhani mayaya he has become one with the krishna the yogeshwara and it goes without saying that he is a vijay vijitendriya so he has gnana vidyana truptatma kutastha vijitendriya such a person is yukta yogi iti uchyate now what is this business called yukta yogi does that mean there is something called ayukta yogi and gurudev has rightfully given in bracket something important in other words it said to have attained a nirvikalpa samadhi what he is trying to hint at is when the yogi is in nirvikalpa samadhi he is paramatma samahitaha at that point of time all this description is there at the time when such a yogi who is trying to get into nirvikalpa samadhi but has not reached the nirvikalpa samadhi he is still in sarvikalpa samadhi or sampradnyat samadhi such a yogi is a yukta yogi yogi is a yukta because he still not reached the stage of nirvikalpa tata which is called nirbij samadhi or what is called as dharma megha samadhi in patanjali yoga shastra that is why the word yukta and yogi both are used and that is why gurudev has used the word the word nirvikalpa samadhi for him sama shloka sama sama shlo, sama loshta ashma kanchana loshta ashma ka kanchana all are same for him why loshta ashma ka kanchana the whole world is same for him why because the whole mirage has disappeared when the mirage has disappeared what is the point in saying that that point of mirage is gone this point the whole mirage itself is gone gaudapadacharya avastha agaji ghadlechi nahi tyachi varta pushishi kahi samarth ramdas says why are you asking me something about this world when it has not existed at all that is this avastha so that is why for them this kingdom if we look at the kathopanishada where nachiketa has been given umpteen number of temptation by dharmaraja he says that tavay van rutya tava nrutya vaha e yama dharmaraja you take all that you are giving it to me give me only one thing brahmadnyanam the reason being all that is produced all that is within the purview of maya is maya vi it is bound to end because flux change is the rule of prakriti in fact that which is which never changes cannot be prakriti and when i am asking for dhruva pada palak dhruva was asking for dhruva pada dhruva pada is adhala never falling down achyuta never never skalana no skalana of any kind possible why that which never changes is not subject to the change was never born will never die namriyate na jayate that is what was required that is why to kubera the treasurer of heavens even a kingdom on the globe is no prophet has no power to make him dance in ecstasy a sufi rightfully says मैं कौन हूं और क्या हूं रिजवान से पूछो रिजवान मीन कुबेर रिजवान इज कॉल्ड गार्डियन ऑफ गॉड्स वेल्थ मैं कौन हूं और क्या हूं ये रिजवान से पूछो जन्नत मेरे अजदाद की ठुकराई हुई है दैट मीन्स द पैराडाइज हैज बीन किक्ड बाय माय एंसेस्टर्स व्हाट आर यू टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट इज बिकॉज the state that is being described here is of yukta yogi that is how both the shloka are taking us to the description of the gantavyata the ultimate destination has been described this is where we are supposed to reach and gurudev is helping us inch by inch 
to move towards that particular destination or the goal. Hariyo. Hariyo. Sanjeeji, I have a small uh, point to discuss. Can I take a minute? Yes, please. Sanjeeji, of course, in this context of uh, the experience of the uh, Yukta Yogi, Jnana Vijnana, uh, it can be, uh, I mean, like you explained to us also, that the experience of that divine is something we can take it as the Jnana is a uh, Gurudev has given Acharya's uh, commentary below that the book, <laughs> book knowledge and the experience of that, what we have studied in the book knowledge to be taken as Vijnana in the commentary below. Uh, so in our process of uh, uh, evolution, Jnana and Vijnana at the Paramatma Avastha has been explained in the shloka, yes, well understood. But also the so many other elements of Jnana are being explained in the Bhagavad Gita. So practical application like that we are uh, the not the body, mind and intellect, for example, is a constant for a sadhak, sadhak in his path of evolution, in practical application, I think uh, the more uh, <laughs> uh, what is to be kept in mind is that this knowledge that we are not the body, mind and intellect and uh, perhaps at every possible location that we are facing this uh, uh, inflictions in these three instruments, we have to uh, apply this knowledge and to thereby not move away from the equanimity of our mind and intellect equipment. So just I wanted to uh, revisit this and take your opinion uh, because to look at it from the point of view from the Paramatma uh, Vijnanam and also from the point of the transactional day-to-day uh, -day our experiences. So just I wanted to take your opinion on this one. Sanjeev. Absolutely right. In the transactional world, we are struggling with the three where we are transcending from Tamo to Rajo to Sattva Guna. So all our transactional activities are totally focused on enriching Sattva Guna. Even the Shastra Bhyas is also an attempt to enrich the Sattva Guna. Uh, for that matter, if you do not have the requisite amount of Sattva Guna, you will not be understanding the Shastra. That is called Shastra Krupa. Yeah. So our, our struggle at BMI level is to purify the, the three instruments, which itself means increasing the content and the quota or the quantum of the Sattva Guna, which then in turn leads to Chitta Shuddhi, which means the purification of the most receptive, most thin and penetrating structure that we have, which is buddhi. And once that is ripened to a particular level by paroksha jnana, then we are ready to take a jump into the aparoksha jnana or aparoksha anubhuti uh, concept. Yeah. Once we go there, in that place also there is something called learning. Learning meaning there is a thin thread of ego still attached, which is called Shuddha Sukshma Antakarana Vurti. Yeah. Slowly, slowly we dissolve that. And once we dissolve that, then Vidnyanam is also not left because Vidnyanam itself would mean an experience. Yeah, correct. Experience would also mean that it will require a trifurcation of the experiencer and the experience and the something to be experienced. But when the experience goes to a level where there is a self-experience, which is called Svasamvedyata. When Svasamvedyata yeah. comes, it increases or it crosses the boundary of experiential state to non-experiential experience. Svasamvedyata, that is the Paramatman, as you rightly indicated. Yes, at transaction level, we do this. But what is the exact situation? Somebody has to paint the picture of the ultimate yeah. Mount Everest. Correct, correct. Bhagavad Gita is precisely doing that here. Hariyo. 